Ever wondered just how fast you can push an Ender 3 before it falls apart? I want to find out too. My goal is simple. I'm taking my Ender 3 and slapping on upgrade after upgrade after upgrade until its speed rivals the fastest printers out there. Today, we're going to go over what I've been working on over the past couple of months, and also talk about the things I still need to figure out. Let's start from the beginning. This was my Ender back in February. It had $100 worth of upgrades on it for my challenge with Tommy Houghton, but none of these mods were going to suffice. I took it all apart to start fresh. So what are the best upgrades for making an Ender 3 insanely fast? Well, looking at the printer, there are a few obvious ones. First and foremost, the Y-axis. The heavy bed on the Y-axis will always be a limiting factor for speeds and accelerations, and the stock V-wheels aren't very rigid either. If we want something to go faster, we have two options. We can either make it lighter or add more power. So let's do both. Now, I want to make it clear that nothing I'm doing here is particularly novel. In fact, we've seen setups like this for quite a while on high-end printers like the LH Stinger. As you can see here, the Stinger has a bed made from a carbon fiber plate, which is super rigid and also extremely light. We can also see that the Y-axis has two motors on it. An all-wheel drive setup like this has twice the power and half the effective belt length, both of which are beneficial for printing fast. I considered just stealing the LH Stinger's Y-axis and putting it on my Ender, but I think I can up the ante even more. This is Kev Ender, and it's currently the fastest 3D printer on the planet. Kevin designed some all-wheel drive motor mounts, as well as a handy bed mount that uses linear rails instead of V-wheels. The only downside to Kevin's setup is that it uses 6mm belts. Why is this an issue? Well, in short, wider belts are stronger and don't stretch as much under tension. And that's especially useful when you're trying to sling a heavy bed around with accelerations over 1 million millimeters per second squared. The LH Stinger that I mentioned earlier uses 9 millimeter belts on Y, but I decided to go even further and try for 12 millimeter belts on my build. I took Kevin's CAD and modified it so everything would fit. I also moved the idlers up so the belt path would be more in line with the rest of the bed rather than pulling on the whole assembly from the very bottom. I really should have opted for live shaft idlers here, as normal toothed idlers limit me to around 15 pounds of belt tension before the bearings inside them start to die. Hopefully that'll be good enough. I printed out the motor mounts on my Q1 Pro and got to assembling them. For motors, I'm trying out the OMC 17HS192504 SHV1 motors, or just OMC 2504s for short. These are relatively affordable, super high performance NEMA 17s that will get even faster once we add 48 volts into the equation, but we'll talk about that later. The main reason I chose them was because they have a 55 mm long shaft. Without it, adding double shear support would be impossible for 12 mm belts. I've also created some very large support feet for the Y axis extrusion, which will help stop it from tilting when the bed is moving. Again, these are not my idea. In fact, I was using LH's cross support feet on my Ender before this, and I liked the design so much that I had to incorporate it into my new motor mounts as well. I'm not going to mount the support feet until everything else is together though, as currently they just kind of get in the way. For the bed itself, I opted to modify the existing Ender 3 bed and carriage. I made the carriage more symmetrical and carved out some extra space so it wouldn't collide with the stepper motors. The bed itself is basically the same as stock. I just made it slightly smaller for better compatibility. You can buy heaters for the LH Stinger on AliExpress, and I wanted my Ender to be able to use these as well. I got the carriage and the bed cut from carbon fiber by the sponsor of today's video, PCBWay. PCBWay does way more than just PCBs. Of course, they offer high quality, affordable PCB manufacturing, but did you know that they also offer CNC machining, laser cutting, and even 3D printing? Whether you're just a hobbyist or prototyping your next big project, PCBWay has all the tools you need to bring your ideas to life. For today's video, I've used their CNC machining and laser cutting services, and the quality and turnaround time are seriously impressive. Check them out using my link below, and thanks again to PCBWay for supporting the channel. I was not expecting the carbon fiber to be so light. I'm going to weigh the two bed setups back to back and see just how much weight we shed. Starting with the stock bed and the glass print surface, it's looking like right around 1300 grams all in. Pretty heavy. Of course, most people who do want to print fast won't be using a glass plate anyways, so let's take that off and measure again. 
Without the glass, the y-axis comes in at around 900 grams, which sounds like a lot, but isn't bad at all. That might actually be lighter than the y-axis on my Vorons. Now, let's measure the carbon fiber parts. Of course, we also need to consider the extra mass of the printed parts, but all in all, this new setup looks to be just under 450 grams. One thing to note, that 450 grams isn't considering the mass of the two MGN12 carriages that the bed attaches to, so it's probably more like 500 grams once you add those in. Still though, that's a huge improvement over stock, and I'm really really pleased with the results. Now, let's actually get the Y-axis installed. I printed some jigs to mount the MGN12 rails to the Y extrusion, and I carefully tightened those down. It's going to take some careful adjustment to get everything running smoothly. The motor mounts slide on the front and back, with the motors and double shear support being installed first. The idlers at the top run on 5mm pins, and everything feels quite smooth. The carriage mounts install to the MGN12H carriages, and then the carbon fiber carriage screws into those with six heat set inserts. I'm using washers everywhere to hopefully stop the screws from coming loose. Realistically though, I'm going to need Loctite on all of these screws. One thing we didn't talk about just yet was belt attachment and belt tensioning. For that, I designed a little piece that sits between the carriage and the bed itself. One side clamps the belts into place, and on the other side we have a tensioning mechanism. With a long enough hex key, we should be able to tension the belts even when the bed is installed on top, and that's thanks to these access holes in the back. I'm quite proud of how this all turned out, but only time will tell if it actually works. Next up, we can move on to the X and Z axis. For Z, I decided to go with the OG Kevin aka Sam belted Z. This seems like the de facto standard for belted Z on an ender. I don't really have a lot to comment on here. I bought the pouch kit on AliExpress and it had all the required bearings, pulleys, and the rod, but do be aware that the kit doesn't come with hardware. I did need to mirror some of the parts in the slicer to get everything to fit properly, but that's just because I'm doing something special for my x-axis. You see, I wanted to go all-wheel drive on my x-axis as well, and I figured the easiest way to do this would be by simply replacing the idler on the right with a copy of the motor mount on the left. I got this piece laser cut and anodized by PCBWay, and I'm pleased to report it matches exactly with the stock piece. I had to install this plate using T-nuts since the stock holes didn't line up, but that's not an issue. For the X motors, I'm once again using OMC 2504s with a printed housing for double shear support. Unlike on Y, I'm not going to be using wider belts here, purely because I'd have to change the whole belt path for that to work. 6mm belts should be just fine here anyways. Now that we have the X-axis mostly assembled, we can put the whole thing together on the printer. Getting everything aligned here was pretty annoying, but it was worth it, because in the end I had a super simple all-wheel drive setup. One thing you've most likely noticed is that there's currently no way to tension the belts. That's a problem for future me when I'm working on the tool head. Speaking of the tool head, that's something I still haven't figured out just yet. I had good results with the dual overvolted 5015s on the budget build. In fact, those cooled so well that PLA parts would warp clean off the bed with anything over 30% fan speed. However, I'm concerned about reliability with a setup like that. There's also the mass of the fans to consider as well. For maximum performance, I'd like to try CPAP cooling, but to my knowledge at least, there aren't any existing Ender tool heads that support it. Between this and the belt tensioning, I will most likely need to make something completely custom. I have lots of time to think about what I want to do, since unfortunately I'm not going to be able to work on this Ender until September now. You see, I moved to a different province for the summer and I wasn't able to bring everything with me. As of today, I'm still working on getting my future YouTube studio assembled inside of this garage but once that's done, I'll be back to videos as normal. This space is actually a lot larger than back home, and I'll be able to try some new projects that I wouldn't be able to do otherwise. Alright, I'm gonna leave it here for today, folks. If you have any ideas for upgrades I should install, or think I should have done some things differently, please don't hesitate to let me know in the comments section below. I'll see you guys in the next video.